Welcome to the Maine Department of Education Pre-K for Me Unit 1 Overview. Unit 1 is Family. This is presented by the Early Learning Team. <clears throat> and here is a view of the Maine Department of Education Early Learning Team, including email contact information. The Early Learning Vision. All of Maine's children are prepared to transition into their adolescent years as healthy, engaged, and inquisitive learners. The early learning mission, to collaborate with all stakeholders to promote the well-being of the whole child to support children's learning opportunities from birth through the early elementary grades. Unit 1 is Family. The goals for this Unit 1 overview are to learn the overall unit concepts, connect concepts to read alouds, centers, and small groups, to gain tips to support your instruction and flow of the unit. We will learn the overall big ideas and concepts of Unit 1. We will review curriculum components and connections to the concepts, and we will see Pre-K for Me in main classrooms. The big ideas. Children will explore and talk about families and the different ways family members relate to and help one another. Children will explore how families work together to solve problems, conflicts, and dilemmas. Children will consider the roles and responsibilities of family members. The unit concepts. Family members have role names. Some family members live together. Sometimes family members live apart. Grown-ups in the family take care of the children. Younger children need more care and sometimes older children can help care for the younger siblings. Sometimes grown-ups and families tell the children they need to stop doing something or to be quiet. Sometimes children get upset at their parents. Families do fun things together Family members support each other. Family members express their emotions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's a view of a pre-K classroom. If you pause the video, you can look a little more carefully at the different areas of the classroom and see where different centers would be. And now let's look at the core read aloud books in unit one. The first book introduced is Crybaby. In Cry Baby, a baby wakes up in the middle of the night crying, and the whole family tries to help her stop crying. They all try different techniques that might help soothe babies. The next book introduced is Peter's Chair. Peter lives with his mom, dad, and baby sister. One day, Peter notices that the furniture he used as a baby is now getting painted pink for his baby sister and gets upset. We see how he and his family work through this. The third book introduced is Sometimes I'm Bum Baloo. In this book, we meet Katie and learn about what sometimes happens when she gets angry. We also talk about how her mother helps her and about self-control. The fourth book in the unit is Corduroy. In Corduroy, a little girl goes to a department store with her mother and wants to buy a stuffed bear which is Corduroy. We see Corduroy's adventures in the department store when the store is closed. And we also see what happens when Lisa's mother tells her that she can't buy the bear and how Lisa and her mother solve the problem. The last core book in the unit is Hello Goodbye, The Hello Goodbye Window. In this book, a little girl waves to her grandparents through their kitchen window. She calls it the Hello Goodbye Window. She sees many things through the window and her grandmother tells her that it's a magic window because anyone can come by at any time. Here's a look at supporting vocabulary and language through the core books by looking at the lesson plan. Notice here that there is a section for vocabulary and there's also the section entitled Teacher's Will. With these sections will help you with the vocabulary words to support your students, as well as some comprehension questions and aids throughout the story reads. There are four different readings of each core book. The first reading is an orientation to the story. The students are introduced to the main character's problem and some of the vocabulary. 
In reading, too, we extend their understanding of the story, vocabulary, and plot. In reading three, students reconstruct the story. This is an interactive story read where students help retell the story. Reading four is acting out the story. Students dramatize the story using story language and vocabulary. Now let's take a look at the centers in unit one. Centers provide a wonderful opportunity for some incidental teaching and vocabulary development. It is a time to help children to make connections back to the core read aloud stories and to lessons they've experienced through Let's Find Out About It and small group activities. It is also a time to make connections to students' lives and the world around us, as well as to have deep conversations and support their language and concept development. Here's a lesson plan for a center. Lesson plans always include the vocabulary. It will include how to introduce the center. Also notice that it includes some suggestions for when you're engaging with students during centers, such as ideas for modeling and questions to ask during centers and dis possible discussion ideas. There is also a section for documentation for ideas on how to document students' work through the centers. And you can also see that there is a provocation and the provocation sections will help you with additional ideas to extend the learning. Another document that will help you in supporting students is the Centers Language Support document. And these are available for individual centers throughout the curriculum. These highlight vocabulary as well as examples for conversations and questions during centers. These are helpful, <clears throat> helpful for all teaching staff and can be helpful for visitors and observers in your classroom, as well as when you have substitute teachers in your classroom. The block center in unit one, students will build towers, they will build homes, they will play with family figures in homes, create signs for the block center, and build homes with windows. Building towers is introduced in week one. Connections are made to Peter's chair. Children are introduced to making a plan for their structure, structure and encouraged to plan their towers. Plans can be made by using technology or on paper, and you can see both of those options through examples on the screen. Images of towers are used as references and children are encouraged to use those for inspiration. In the first picture here, you can see on the wall an image of Peter's tower from Peter's chair. Children will experiment with stability, discuss shapes used in their buildings, and can discuss the differences between towers <clears throat> they've built and they've seen in stories. And helpful hint to introduce brainstorming and planning to your students early on. Building homes and adding families. Building homes is also introduced in week one, a few days after towers, and it continues into week two. Connections are made to Peter's chair, crybaby, and sometimes I'm Bumbaloo. Again, children are encouraged to play in their buildings. And much like towers, children are exploring stability, comparing structures, and working on planning. <clears throat> in week two, you add family figures to the block center. Connections are made to Peter's chair, crybaby, and sometimes I'm Bumbaloo. Students are encouraged to create neighborhoods with their structures, and children can play with family figures within their buildings and neighborhoods. Inscur encourage discussions about families, comparing and contrasting families, and compare to families in the stories. In week four, you introduce building homes with windows, making connections to the Hello Goodbye window. Children are encouraged to compare their buildings to those from the stories, and they could even build what they see when they look out their windows. Creating signs may occur at your writing or drawing area, but children are encouraged to create signs for the block center. Or you may choose to have sign making material added to your block center or somewhere right near it. This activity occurs in week three. You can also add pre-made signs to the block center, such as the ones you see here. Dramatization in Unit 1. Children will care for babies, paint furniture, swaddle and transport babies, and give baths and dress babies. 
Caring for Babies is introduced in week one, and connections will be made to Peter's Chair and Crybaby. Children will explore different ways to take care of babies, such as feeding them and soothing them by rocking them and hushing them, and other ways that they've seen families soothe babies in the stories. Encourage students to act out scenes from the stories they've heard. Have conversations with them about their own families and make connections to families in the read-alouds. Transporting babies and washing and dressing babies. In, intro in week three, we introduce swaddling and transporting babies with connections to Crybaby and Peter's Chair. Children will explore swaddling babies and using different ways to transport babies, such as strollers, slings, carriers, etc. In week four, washing babies is introduced, making connections to crybaby. You may choose to incorporate water or not. Emphasis is made on being gentle while washing babies, and students are encouraged to follow the steps for giving babies baths. Helpful hint here is to remember to create the visual for how to give a baby a bath. Have it prepared before introducing this center. Painting furniture. This comes up in week two. P connections are made to Peter's chair while Peter, Peter's family paints baby furnitures, baby's furniture. While engaging with students in this center, have conversations about why people may paint furniture or even walls, how furniture for babies is different than furniture for bigger kids or adults. Compare the similarities and differences of painting furniture to painting that students have done at the easel. The art studio and easel in unit one. Students will experience printing with objects, painting, Painting by inspired by books, creating bubble prints on paper, creating toys and animals. They will experiment with paint mixing, make piggy banks, paint to music, paint with watercolor, and create collages. Here are examples of different paintings throughout the unit. We see paintings inspired by Crybaby, line dot squiggle painting, and bubble paintings. Throughout the unit, students will create paintings inspired by read aloud books. Helpful hint here is can be helpful to have the book visually represented at the easel. In week one, students create paintings inspired by Crybaby. This is the first picture you see here. Bubble paintings are introduced in week two, and these are also inspired by and connected to Crybaby in which one of the family members blows bubbles to try to soothe the baby. Line dot squiggle paintings, which is shown in the middle, is introduced in week four with connections to the hello goodbye window and sometimes I'm Bumbaloo. Here, students are exploring the different strokes artists use to create paintings. Other paintings include watercolor painting and painting to music. Painting activities provide an opportunity to connect with students, connect students' work to the stories that we read. This is a great opportunity for discussion. Ask students to tell you about their paintings. Ask follow-up questions to keep the conversations going. Collages. Paper collages are introduced in the art studio in week one, connecting to the artwork in Peter's chair. Helpful hint for some fine motor skill building. If you teach some cutting skills during the first few weeks of school, have students cut scrap paper and then keep these for pieces for the collage center. Using scissors and cutting scrap paper could be done in your discovery center before you even introduce the unit. Object printing. Object printing is introduced in week one and connections are made to the artwork in Peter's chair. During this activity, compare, compare the techniques used in printing, collages, and paintings. Compare how students' art pieces are similar and different from each other and from the stories. And another helpful hint, you can use stamp pads and or trays of paint for object printing, and you could consider adding the printing to the collages. Creating animals and stuffed toys. Connections are made to Crybaby and Peter's chair. In Crybaby, the family tried to soothe the baby 
and we find out she really wanted her stuffed animal. In Peter's chair, Peter took items with him when he was feeling upset to help him feel more comfortable. One of these was his toy crocodile. In this art center activity, students get to create animals and toys that they think would be comforting to them. This is a great opportunity to discuss the different textures and the variety of materials used in the project. Library in Unit 1. Students will read books about families and caring for babies, and students will read books to your classroom dolls. Here's a picture of reading to babies. In this center, make connection to the unit stories by saying that another way that families show they care about each other and that they spend time together is by reading together. Students will get to read to the babies in the library center. Make connections to the students reading at home and who they read with. Discovery in Unit 1. Students will explore transferring water with various containers, bottles, and funnels. They will explore water, water wheels, and they will explore moving water faster or slower with funnels and tubes. Transferring water and moving water. Students' first experiences with water in Pre-K for Me is exploring transferring and moving water. This builds into the following activities, such as water wheels. Here we see students experimenting with water wheels. They can experiment with the movement of water through water wheels. Talk with students about how to try to make the water wheels move faster or slower. The Manipulative Center in Unit 1. Students will explore letters with environmental print. Students will match paint chips. They will explore fabric swatches and spell names with letter tiles. Using letters comes up in the manipulatives a few times during Unit 1. Make connections to the letters in the titles of the unit stories. Students will explore letters in various ways. For example, they could put letters together that look similar. They could explore upper and lowercase letters. Here we see examples of exploring letters by spelling student names and by using environmental print. Paint chip matching. This center connects to Peter's chair. Talk about where people buy paint and how they pick out paint colors and that stores don't have cans of every single color of paint so that you look, you look at paint chips to decide your color. In this center, you can talk about similar colors. The lesson plan also shows a few ways of doing paint chip matching or activities with paint chips, including by color families or using paint chips with letters on them to spell students' names. Writing and drawing in Unit 1. Children will write names and family names, make names with various letter manipulatives, create birth announcements, create pictures inspired by read-alouds, and create vocabulary cards for unit vocabulary. Here are just some of the examples of activities in the Writing and Drawing Center. One of the early activities in the center is making names with manipulatives. Make connections to names of characters from unit stories and learn about each other's names. In the Hello Goodbye window picture, students draw something that they might see when they look out a window. This could be either realistic or using their imagination. Teachers can help them brainstorm what to draw and take dictation about the drawings. Creating birth announcements connects to Peter's chair and Cry Baby. In both stories, there's a new baby. We teach students that sometimes when families have a new baby, they create birth announcements to tell people about the new baby. Encourage students to create birth announcements with a baby's name, height, and weight. You can see in the picture on the slide here that a teacher incorporated a scale and measuring tapes. When we display students' writing, drawing, and dictation, it shows them that their ideas matter, and it highlights the importance of written language. This can help motivate students to continue to engage in writing. Try to find a location near your writing center where you can display students' writing, drawing, and dictation. Outdoor learning and nature connections, extensions, nature family portraits, Butterfly Metamorphosis, Families of Trees, Farmer's Market, Geese and Ducks, 
and other extension activities. The weekly grid has nature activities, but there is also a document of additional activities. Here are some examples of nature and outdoor learning from unit one. We see nature portraits. This occurs in the first week of the unit. Students create a family picture or self portrait using items from nature. The third picture on the screen shows that student, shows students who created homes and structures outside using natural items. Be sure to check out the additional Nature Extensions and Outdoor Connections document. This is a portion of that document here. It provides additional ideas for incorporating nature into your classrooms. Small groups in Unit 1. Book browsing, exploring manipulatives, drawing families, telling storytelling with pictures, letter matching, drawing emotions, pen and watercolor outdoor illustrations, Bumbaloo masks, button sorting, playing with numbers, and rhyming words. Numerous small group activities focus on unit concepts as well as literacy and math concepts. Typically, you have three groups per day. One would be an independent group activity that students can participate in fairly independently. Another group is a low teacher support activity requiring a little teacher support. And the third group would be a mid to high support activity. Students go to only one group per day, so the activities would change after three days. And here's a view of the lesson plans. Again, like we pointed out in other lesson plans, there is vocabulary highlighted for you as well as guiding questions to support you in helping build your students' language and concept development. Examples from small groups. Here we see examples of drawing families. This is a medium support group in week one. Connections are made to the stories you've read up to this point, Crybaby and Peter's Chair. You can have discussions about the people in the families in each story and in students' families. Here are example, more examples from small group activities. Book browsing is an independent group. This is conducted frequently throughout the school year. You can also include other independent groups su such as with manipulatives. Bumbaloo Masks is a high support group that comes up in week four, connections made to the story Sometimes I'm Bumbaloo. In this group, you talk about the different about different feelings and ask students if they've created their masks to represent a specific feeling or a character or an animal and compare the masks to those to the story and to other students. Drawing emotions is a high support group that occurs in week two, connecting to Sometimes I'm Bumbaloo and Crybaby. You can have discussions about what characters, what feelings, the characters in the book were having and connect feelings to those that students have felt. Students can create illustrations for the emotions. This could be used alongside a feelings chart in your classroom. And more examples of small groups, exploring manipulatives, which is a low support group, primarily introducing the use of manipulatives once students become very familiar with, with manipulatives, you could have manipulatives as an independent option. Exploring fasteners is a medium support group, working with and comparing different types of fasteners. And button supporting is a medium support group, sorting buttons by various attributes. Let's find out about it. Caring for babies, baby furniture, hardware store, pets, fasteners, masks, signs, musical instruments, and how people get around. In Let's Find Out About It, students learn more information about concepts introduced in the read-alouds. These groups sometimes include a nonfiction book. The learning experienced in Let's Find Out About It can be applied in activities in centers, small groups, and really throughout your day. The lesson plan, again, notice the vocabulary highlighted as well as guiding questions, which will support language and vocabulary development. And here's an example of a musical instrument. Let's find out about it. 
Swiplin. Swiplin is a whole group working on phonological aware awareness, language and literacy skills, and math skills. You'll sing songs in unit one, such as bingo and five green speckled frogs, and play games such as if your name starts with and a clue game. The Swiplin component builds over time. What you're introducing first is foundational and builds throughout the school year. For example, you start with the traditional song bingo, and then later on you will change letters of the song. The if your name starts with game begins with beginning letters and then includes beginning sounds and can even go into ending sounds. Remember to print and prepare any new materials for Swiplin. Um, access these on the Unit 1 website. Math. Math comes in in many different parts of the Pre-K for Me curriculum, including in whole group lessons, small groups, manipulatives, and even other centers, and Swiplin. And you can refer to the Pre-K for Me guiding documents for additional information about math in the curriculum. Some tips for Unit 1. Have families send in family and caregiver photos to use and, use and post throughout the unit. Think about posting in our family's bulletin board. You could even keep this up all year. Survey your families to better understand the family makeups. A lot of teachers do this prior to the beginning of the school year. If you have not gotten a chance to do it yet, the family unit is a great opportunity to do that. Have books that represent many different families, including families of your students. And remember that the materials from Swiplin will be used throughout the year, so do not put these in storage with your Unit 1 materials. Helpful links include the Pre-K for Me Unit 1, Pre-K for Me overall website, and the Department of Education Early Learning webpage. If you have questions regarding Pre-K for Me, you can contact Marcy Whitcomb at her email there. And you can find the main Department of Education online using those references.